Now, there are rumors about Gareth Southgate leaving the England job after the Euros, so I asked Pep Guardiola to manage the England national team for the next four seasons. Now, after taking over in 2022, he went on to win the Euro Nations League and then the Euros, and quickly or shortly after that, he went on to join FC Bayern Munich. So, let's see how England turned out when Pep Guardiola was in charge. Now, Harry Kane, Bukayo Saka and Declan Rice have become key players. I think Phil Foden as well is one of those key players. But we're going to look at the schedule and see how everything turned out. For some reason, I don't think England went on to have that many terrible performances. And we can see here, just going from most recent, at this point, Guardiola is no longer in charge because he has already moved to Bayern as of 2025, June. So it was from June 2025, that was when he went on to move to Bayern. And that was after the second Nations League final that they went on to lose to Germany. They did go on to beat Spain on penalties and they lost the finalissima to Argentina by one goal to nil. But prior to that, they had a fantastic run of games. They probably didn't even lose any game. They've beaten in France, Poland, Norway as well in the final. For some reason, Norway actually went to the Euros final against England. And on, before England went there, they met Serbia along the way. They beat Spain and Portugal by three goals to nil. They beat Slovakia, Romania as well in their journey. And surprisingly, as of June 2025, I think Guardiola moved on from the job and joined Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga for the second spell. So I decided to take over the England job myself and see the possible ideas that Pep Guardiola will actually go through when he's trying to manage the team or the possible tactics, the players that he can use in different player roles and obviously team instructions that he can actually use when managing England using the Pep Guardiola style of play because that's basically what we're going to try to do in the remaining part of this video. Now going straight into the job, the first thing that comes to my mind is to actually look at the tactics and see the system that I'm going to like to play but Guardiola is probably not going to do that. So ideally we're going to look at the squad or in fact the staff first of all. We're going to look at the staff room and then see who is available for us. We've got Steve Holland as the assistant manager. Let's look at his attributes, player judging Ability and potential, they're quite good. Working with youngsters, they're quite good as well. Determination, so not much to change here. I kind of like Steve Holland in charge. And then goalkeeper, we have Martin Margitson. Um, not very good in goalkeeper distribution. And being Pep Guardiola, I'm probably going to want to increase this or find a better goalkeeping coach that can work on goalkeeper distributions. We have another sneak peek at Sam Meeks and he is even worse than the other guy. So I'm going to want to change my two goalkeeping coaches and then just going through the whole squad to see who is available. Jolion Lescott is here. I'm probably going to sack Lescott as well just to try and get a coach that can help me integrate the Pep Guardiola way into these England players. After going through the staff, obviously we're going to look at the squad of players that we have in the team and of course Kawaka is one name that sticks out. He has a good relationship with Pep Guardiola. Harry Kane on the other hand, well he did want to go to Manchester City at one point but it didn't materialize. He ended up going to Bayern and I'm happy for Harry Kane being in Bayern Munich. Harry Maguire is another key player. That, oh my goodness, Harry Maguire. I'm curious. Let me look at Harry Maguire's attributes for some reason. As a ball playing defender passing is not so great but marking not so good as well his acceleration it might not help the guardiola cause because we're going to play with a high line so maguire might not be in the team i might swap harry maguire with somebody else so when you're managing a national team looking at its squad of players that you're going to pick go into the national pool check all the stuff you need to know who you're going to bring in who you're going to send out let me just try and fill everybody by ability and see which other central defender is not in the team that is somehow you know of top quality that we don't have in the team yet i know john stones is probably already in the england squad he is quite good as well so he's one player that i'm going to want to pay attention to when i'm working on building my system there's a lot to choose from for pep guardiola when you're managing england a good replacement for harry Maguire already sticks out in fikayo tomori and tomori has well not so good passing but his mental attributes and physical attributes are way above Maguire's level so i'm going to want to bring in tomori if he's not already in the team I'm going to want to right click this and go into the national team and then okay he's already in the england squad so that's good we have a replacement for maguire because i'm going to throw maguire out of the team like asap so after reviewing my staff and my you know squad of players and the next thing to do is actually jump into the tactics this is probably my favorite part of football manager really but we're going to try to replicate a pep guardiola style system using the england national team and off the top of my head, gig impressing is not what we're going to be looking for. Control possession, these are presets that you can actually use, but I'm going to go ahead to create a system of my own. But control possession is quite good for England. In it kind of suits the Guardiola way, but although Guardiola leans towards a, a kind of dominant tiki-taka style player that is really extreme, not just controlling the possession of the ball. It's, a, it's like an extreme version of control possession. That's why I think that's what tiki-taka is called. It's like an extreme passing movement 
for possession based style of play but we're going to look at just the presets to see what's good for england looking at the formation as well the 5-3-2 system kind of, kind of works for england and guardiola you probably want to have your central midfielders high up the field because these guys are too close in number in the defensive third and we need a lot of bodies up front so 5-2-3 might not work out for the system that i want to use but it's suitable for england so it's a, it's a tricky one to see how you can actually blend things together looking at the gig impressing i know it's not going to be a gig impressing system but 4-2-3-1 nope that's not going to work <laughs> it could work but i don't know if pep Guardiola has actually played a 4-2-3-1 system before maybe his team is always constantly changing and revolving so you never really know if they get into a 4-2-3-1 shape but if you do have interesting facts about Pep Guardiola's formations and choice of formations you can do let me know in the comment section but we can jump into creating a formation now I like to start with no tactic or no formation whatsoever then I move my players around that's kind of how we're going to do it but looking at the way England is I'm going to have the one striker in Harry Kane of course we're going to have him in there just to move the second player to a wide player kind of have him play in that Grealish role because this is I'm going to want to play out here like Jack Grealish so have Harry Kane up front and then you have two central midfielders I'm not really sure about the back three yet but we're going to start off with the back three and then drag one player to be a central defender in this case and then obviously we can start to see the Manchester City's four three two four one system that is shaping up now but you notice something really peculiar about this system is that it doesn't allow you play Trent Alexander-Arnold in the tactic and Rhys James and Luke Shaw, all those kind of players and England do have good wingers or wing backs so we do want to integrate those players I don't want to leave them out so this back three system might not really be so so helpful I'm going to want to drag my my Jack Grealish into the wing back row here I'm going to put somebody else in that wide row and then have the second wing back play in where Trent Alexander Arnold is going to be in this position so now I have two players here and of course I'm not going to want this guy to be so narrow in there he might end up moving there considering the roles that we go on to select but my central midfielders are going to be slightly higher up instead of using a defensive midfielder so there's going to be one shape that we can go for it's quite loose in midfield and I don't think Guardiola is going to enjoy creating this kind of system so we're going to have an alternative to this tactic where you're going to have a 4-3-3 dmy the traditional guardiola 4-3-3 system and we can have one player here and then we have a defensive midfielder that can actually accommodate declan rice because that's going to be the declan rice role we can have two central midfielders in jude bellingham and somebody else probably james ward prowse also and then you have the other players playing in the wide row and of course Harry Kane up front or another striker should I choose to use another striker. Now starting with the 3-5-2 system, I already have a problem in central midfield as I have only two central midfielders and I need extra bodies in here to actually help us dominate the midfield. So I'm going to look for Trent wherever he is. He's probably going to be in the team. Um, let me try and fill that everybody by position and then going all the way down. Are you kidding me? Trent Alexander-Arnold is not in the England team. So I'm going to have to bring in Trent Alexander-Arnold because I'm confused as to why he's not in the team. And then filter by best position. We do have a lot of goalkeepers and Trent Alexander-Arnold is a right back. So where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oh my goodness. Oh, Livermento is also a very good option for England. I was still looking for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Okay, the game actually classed him as a wing-back right, not just a right-back. So we're going to bring Trent into the England national team now, call him into the England squad. Very important that we have Trent in there. I don't actually understand why he wasn't in the team originally. So we're going to scroll down now and look for Trent wherever he's been thrown into and then we have Trent so Trent obviously instead of playing as a traditional wing back he's going to play as an inverted wing back on support duty so he can get into the box or get into the central midfield position and try to control the game from there the next player that I'm going to drag in here to try and help out Trent is Jude Bellingham and I want Jude Bellingham to play normally as a central midfielder on support duty but I notice that box to box is quite good as well between box to box and central midfield down support are the two roles that I would likely use Jude Bellingham to play in this role. Now beside him we can have a slightly more defensive player in Declan Rice wherever he is. He should be yeah just below Trent Alexander Arnold we have Declan Rice. So Declan Rice can also play obviously probably as a ball winner or a deep line playmaker. He's also a very good box to box midfielder as well. But considering that we're going to want Jude Bellingham to get a lot higher in the field, get be a bit more adventurous, we're going to want somebody that is slightly more solid. So but obviously it's not set in stone. There's a lot of ways you can actually put a lot of combinations for you to actually find the two best midfielders and it's probably a headache for Pep Guardiola or Gareth Southgate whoever is in charge of England. Now the goalkeeper role is actually a tricky one because I do like Nick Pope and I don't know how well Pickford has not really really consistent as well so I do like the fact that I have two goalkeepers to actually choose from and then looking at Nick Pope he has not the highest eccentricity so he's going to be slightly more cautious goalkeeper to work with and then Pickford obviously is going to probably suit the 
Pep Guardiola style of play a lot more because he's slightly more adventurous, has a lot of passing range as well. So with Pickford, that can actually play a super keeper on support duty or even an attack, depending on how I want to do it. But with, with Nick Pope, you're probably stuck with the sweeper keeper on the duty that is slightly more cautious and just no nonsense goalkeeper kind of now for my back four i've gone for something quite adventurous i have kyle walker playing as a wide center back on support and then in fact i have two wide center backs luke shaw is playing as the wide center back on support on the left hand side so i do have chill well in here currently he's playing as a wing back on automatic duty because i'm going to find something more for him much later and then john stones is the one ball playing defender on defend dt the reason why i opted for this role is because i need to have a lot of movement in our system and try to create chances try to create 2v1 situations when we're higher up the field because we're going to play with the high line that's why i opted for the wide center back on support the wide center back is willing to overlap and create 2v1 situations and tomori is quite good but he's not a luke shaw luke shaw has a lot of athleticism and crossing as well he has a lot of movement in him so if we're playing with a different team like if we're playing against a team like germany or spain we might want to be slightly more cautious when we're playing and we may not go on to use this but against the other teams that we should be beating this is quite adventurous and it's quite fluid as well now i'm going to bring on bukayo saka to play as wide right he's the one player that i do have on or like i do like in this role mason mount as well i can actually throw him in here but i want saka to be in this role and then he obviously have him playing as a slightly more attacking player playing as an inverted winger on attack duty and then beside him ap i do like the advanced playmaker in this role but the worry is jack Grealish. i don't know how comfortable he's going to be playing as an ap on support duty i do like the role playing the ap on the wide left it creates a lot of creativity or it makes a lot of chances from this role and i've enjoyed playing that role this year so i do like Grealish in this role but if i can even find jack Grealish, where exactly is jack Grealish? is he not in the team as well i'm just going to search for Grealish out into the national pool is filtered by goalkeepers defenders central midfielders all the way to attackers attacking midfielder on the left jack Grealish. okay here we are jack Grealish into the national team can you imagine jack Grealish was not even in the national team huh? please accept so now that Grealish is in the team i can have him play my advanced playmaker position on the left hand side on support dt and then he can come inside and create chances for everybody else declan rice i think i'm going to leave him for now as a central midfielder on support dt and then of course hurricane so we're going to find the hurricane role thank god he's in the squad i was surprised if i wouldn't have seen hurricane hurricane going into the squad to play as nope not an advanced forward i kind of like the idea of a deep line forward on support dt but i'm going to also consider making him play on attack so he can create chances for others while creating chances for himself as well now that we got everybody in it's time to look at the team instructions as to how this england team is going to shape up should pep guardiola be in charge now we're going to begin playing out from the back it's really important and starting with the goalkeeper of course i'm going to include him to take short kicks here i do like pickford's eccentricity but i also want him to try and be more cautious when he's in possession of the ball and we're trying to play out from the back so he's still going to try and start those counter attacks if the opportunity presents itself but first and foremost he's going to try to play out from the back and then you can start from the in possession instructions i'm trying to build a possession based style of play for england so play out of defense is going to be selected for the team in this case and then to make possession really stick on football manager you kind of want to play a controlled patient style of play of course the game kind of favors a higher tempo but if you want to have complete control over the opposition complete control over the ball you need to play with a slightly lower tempo try to hold on to the game and knock the ball about yourself have your players in close proximity to one another try to play that possession based style of play so shorter passing with a slightly lower tempo for some reason i could even go all the way down to like low tempo i'm going to just leave it on slightly lower tempo to allow the team to make those starting runs if the opportunity presents itself now time wasting i'm not going to touch that and i do like low crosses so i'm going to include this and since hurricane is not going to actually be inside the box most of the time he's going to be playing as a deep line forward on support or on attack and he's going to be dropping deep so he's not going to be inside the box to try to win the headers all the time so in case i do have a different player or in case i have hurricane play in a position where we need to score more goals and hit more crosses against teams we're going to change that from low crosses to mixed crosses but often i think i'm going to leave it on low crosses and allow the team to try to play a cut back and then try to break down the opposition that way and of course it's not obviously a set in stone instruction it's just for a start and then walk the ball into the box instruction very relevant for the possession based style of play that we're cooking up and then i thought about turning on the dribble less instruction now from what i've noticed depending on the players that we have in the team and the player roles that we've selected if you go on to turn on this dribble less instruction some players will still run so if you notice that the box to box midfielder here he's still going to make those runs or forward and backwards into the opposition's territory and also dropping deep but 
the team itself is going to prioritize trying to pass the ball all the time so i do want to turn this instruction on to try and emphasize that possession based style of play that we're trying to build so the priority is going to be to dribble less and try to pass the ball as often as possible but players that have players like Bukayo Saka of course that are in inverted winger on attack they will still make runs chill well as well playing as a wing back is still going to make the run when that opposition presents itself but then often the team as a whole is going to generally try to pass the ball among themselves now i heard that Gary Sagi did try possession based football with England for a while even in the Euros but um from what i noticed when i watched the Euros the team wasn't that much of a pressing pressing style of team and even the recent World Cup I don't know how often England press the opposition but for this Pep Guardiola style of play we're going to want to relentlessly press the opposition and try to win the ball high up the field as often as we can so counter press but I'm not going to turn on counter instruction in this sense even the goalkeeper's instruction I think I'm going to slow the pace down if possible and then ask Jordan Pickford or whichever goalkeeper I'm going to be using to try to stifle the opposition and control the game as much as possible so the slow pace down instruction is going to be selected so i'm going to, i've kind of sacrificed our counter attacking ability in this sense so we're going to be imposing ourselves on the opposition rather than trying to counter at every opportunity now with the counter instruction not selected the team is still going to counter but they're not going to force it so i think i prefer it that way and then of course out of possession like i mentioned we're going to want to hustle the opposition up front so we're going to play with a high defensive or much higher defensive line than a high press up front and then obviously the trigger press is going to be selected to be much more often trigger press try to ensure that the you can actually go on to win possession higher up the field before the opposition starts a counter attack it's relevant that we do this because if we do not have the press selected and then the opposition go on to pass their way around us the so there's so much space for them to get in behind so we have to find a way to actually hustle them as early as possible and win that ball back and of course you're going to actually watch the games we have to find a way to observe the match and see how things are going if it's not helpful to actually play with a much more often trigger press we will take that down but down to pep guardiola style of play these teams have the emphasis of trying to win the ball back as early as possible and win it back in numbers as well so like two three or four players are going to hustle on a position and then block all the passing lanes stop the opposition from getting the ball stop the counter attack at source and then recycle possession and continue from there i've put a lot less thought into this second tactic it's the 4-3-3 system and because football manager is so dynamic he is obviously we're obviously going to make so many changes as you go on throughout the season but i've kept the key the team instructions the same much higher defensive line with a much higher trigger press or a high trigger press and then for this time you are using a more often trigger press high, high line of engagement and then in transition the goalkeeper is still be asked to slow the pace down then we're still counter pressing and then when we're in possession of the ball i'm using a much lower tempo now and then with a slightly shorter passing the player of defense instruction is still prevalent for the team and then we're still dribbling less and walking the ball into the box but then you notice that the passing the crosses have been set to miss crosses for this second tactic for this one i opted for two wing backs on attack duty because i do want the inside forwards actually cut inside it's pretty old school kind of 4-3-3 but instead of a holding midfielder i'm using declan rice to play as a more dynamic defensive midfielder so he's going to take a lot more risk and bellingham and ward Pross, of course are going to have a lot more movement so that dribble less instruction is really going to help us try to control the game because we're using a lot of rules that involve running and players getting into opposition areas and trying to help harry kane in the box now you notice i did make a mistake here in ben white and john stones ben white is going to be in here as a ball playing defender on defended you know a central defender and often this is actually going to be Kyle walker instead of ben white i notice i kind of enjoy using Kyle walker as a center half now even though he's not designated to play as a center half but he's still going to jump in there once in a while and ben white as well obviously is going to be the second center half alongside john stones there's room for everybody really joe gomez and eric dyer everybody's going to get a run in in this side but it's the joy of managing england really so if I was managing England as Pep Guardiola these are sort of the two systems that I'm going to start with and continue to grow on and evolve from there as the game continues to evolve so if you do have recommendations for any of these roles that I've selected if you do have your own thoughts towards Pep Guardiola managing England and the kind of roles and philosophy he's going to use actually implement in the team should he take over as the England national team manager manager of the three lions do let me know in the comment section as well and if you feel Pep Guardiola's system will or will not work for the English national team you can also let me know in the comment section what you think I do want to see him manage internationally I do want to see him take on a big job like the England you know the three lions national team but it begs the question if they're actually going to win the world cup if Pep Guardiola was in charge of England but that's an interesting topic to take on another day so those are my thoughts for Guardiola on the England national team I'll catch you with more football manager tactic videos and football manager game management videos like this if you did enjoy this video do let me know in the comment section as well I'll see you soon